My name is Daver, and in this video, I unbox, set up, and test the Atom Stack P7 M40 Portable Laser Engraver. And at the end of the video, I will be sharing my first thoughts and whether or not it has a place in my wood shop. Stick around. Thank you for checking out this video. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do so now. It only takes a split second and really helps this channel out. I appreciate it. It has always been a childhood dream of mine to play with lasers. And I was actually looking at adding a laser engraver to my shop eventually. I've also been debating on which to add to my wood shop first, a CNC router or a laser. Luckily, the universe decided for me, and now I have a laser. For full disclosure, this laser engraver was sent to me for free by Adam Stack to check out, test, and make a video about. However, that said, they are not paying me to make this video, nor be biased in any favor toward their products. So I'm gonna give you an honest take on this laser in my first thoughts at the end of this video. Here are some key features of the Atom Stack P7 M40 40 watt portable laser engraver. The engraving size is 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters or 7.8 inches by 7.8 inches. It is compact, lightweight, and easily portable. This laser engraver can be used for both engraving and cutting a variety of materials as well as taking down stormtroopers. I made up that last part, it's not real. According to Adam Stack's website, it can engrave the following materials. Wood, bamboo, cardboard, plastic, leather, MDF, slate, lacquered metal, and mirror stainless steel. It can also cut wood, cardboard, non-woven fabric, veneer, acrylic, some thin plastic board, sponge, MDF, and leather. Now you can find more details about this laser engraver on Adam Stack's website, and I'll make sure to include the link in the description below. Now it was time to unbox the laser. Um, this looked like it got shipped from halfway around the world, and I think it was, but inside the laser box itself was very simple and clean, and on the very top was a cutting mat. Then there was the manual, which this manual was actually pretty nice, and it's in color. I think that's pretty big. And you have your USB cable to connect the laser and your computer. And then the smaller parts for the laser engraver were in bags that had each step labeled on them, which I thought was an awesome touch. This included the focus plate and some material to test the laser engraver with, as well as some tools, zip ties, and here you have the power supply, which, I mean, you know what a power supply looks like, right? Next was the support frame. This part had the control box on it. And then the laser. Okay, as I'm doing the voiceover for this video, I just realized something in this shot. It says, do not engrave reflective materials such as mirror, stainless steel, coated mirrors, etc. Otherwise, it could damage the laser. But didn't I just read from the site that mirror stainless steel is compatible material to engrave? Let's play that back. And mirror stainless steel. And mirror stainless steel. Now, just to double check, I went to the Atom Stack website, and again, it says right there, mirror stainless steel under engraving materials. So, a little bit contradictory, I'd say. Anyways, let's move on. Next was the X-axis assembly. And then some support blocks, which can be used to set this up and also lift up the laser. And then was the Y-axis assembly. And then the other support frame piece. And that's pretty much it. There's not a lot in the box, and that makes me feel good about assembly. I do have to say that the instructions in the manual are pretty straightforward and very simple. Having these bags labeled with each step also made this a lot easier. And I wish a lot more companies would do that. I know some do, but more need to do it. 
and in total, minus installing the software on your computer to use the laser, there were five steps. And while I'm editing this video and cutting it, this was pretty close to real time on getting this assembled. When they say it's quick to set up, they're not kidding. And for me, that was a huge positive because I was just really excited to start using this thing and I didn't want to take all day to get it set up and assembled. Now it was time to install the laser module. And it pretty much just slides into this little holder piece. There are also these little foam pads that you can put on the feet. I don't know if I need them or not, but hey, came with it, I'm gonna use them. The last thing to do was to connect all the cables for the laser engraver. It was a little challenging. The connectors are a little small and kind of in awkward positions, but after a couple seconds, I was able to get them in. Now, you could probably use the zip ties for cable management, but I did not do that yet. And during my initial test, I also didn't notice the cables getting in the way. And that completes the assembly. Pretty easy and did not take very long. For this laser engraver, you're going to want to download something called Laser Gerbil. Now I will say the one downside to this is that it is only compatible with PC. So Mac users, you're out of luck. However, you do have the option to use Lightburn, which has a free trial version, but it is a paid software. Once you've installed Laser Gerbil, you're also gonna wanna add some custom buttons, which will allow you to control your laser. And I found this process pretty straightforward and it is outlined in the manual. Now it was time to connect the laser engraver to my computer and to the software. And it was very easy, I found it right away. And I was ready to add an image to start engraving. Now by default, it picks line to line tracing, but I did find that one bit dithering did engrave a better quality image there are also some other options here to manipulate the image. I would say that the auto trim is probably the one I use the most, and that's gonna cut out the unnecessary space in the image that you want to engrave. Next, you're gonna set the parameters for the laser itself, and there are some defaults that you can use. Now, I did notice that this specific Atom Stack laser is not in the list. However, I just selected the first option, even though that is not the same as the laser I was using. Now here you can also choose the material and also if you wanna cut or engrave. And it will load the preset options for these specific materials. However, you can adjust these to your needs after you apply the presets so you can get the best engraving or cut possible. One thing I wanna mention is that the size is in millimeters, not centimeters and not inches. There is also a material database with all these different presets, depending on the model of laser engraver that you have. However, this specific model of Atom Stack laser engraver is not in the list. So I guess just pick one at random. Once you have your image loaded into the software, this is kind of what it's gonna look like. And then you have the estimated time that the engraving or cut will take and then you can hit run program. I will say that the number one next to this option is the amount of passes that you can take, so you can actually change that. So this was my first attempt at engraving my logo on a 1 8 inch sheet of poplar plywood. Now I will say that my initial engraving was a little light because I used a default setting in which the laser power was about 18%, I believe. As you can tell, it's not that dark. So I ran the program again to go over it and it made a little bit of a difference, but I really think I needed to up the power on the laser. Now I'm engraving another logo, which is my woodworking business logo. And same thing, use the default setting and it came out really light. So I changed the laser power and went over it again. And I think I used 80% power and it really started coming out. 
There is one thing that I will say that even though I didn't move the laser and it's the exact same image, there are some weird ghosting on the numbers for the year here and part of the last couple letters. I don't know what happened, but that's why we're testing. The next thing I wanted to do was test this Homer Simpson eating a donut illustration that I got from a free vector site, which is called Thingiverse. I believe it's a place for 3D models, but you can also find 2D vector graphics as well. And I'm using Southern Yellow Pine, and this actually turned out very, very nice. Now that I figured out how to really get the settings dialed in, I decided to engrave my Dave Vermeer logo on a piece of hard maple. And this came out really nice. Now the one thing about this laser is you'll see that it's pretty bright, but it has a protective glass, so you don't need to wear uh, special eye protection. However, if you forget to move the laser all the way down to your workpiece and start running it, you're gonna have a problem and it's gonna really mess your eyes up. Ask me how I know. The next piece of material I wanted to engrave was some walnut and I found this really nice outdoor cabin scene from freepick.com, which is another site with free vector graphics. And I initially chose the wrong settings for the type of image to engrave. So I went over it again with 100% and I think I cooked it a little too much, but it still turned out nicely. It just needs a little bit of sanding. Now it was time to test out cutting. So I used the two pieces of, I guess it's basswood that came with the laser engraver to do some test cuts. And I was thoroughly impressed. This did such a great job and I'm very excited to use this more. The next thing that I wanted to cut was a little U2 play button. Now here's an example of it outlining my image and where it's going to be engraved, which is very helpful with placement. Now here I'm setting the focus for the laser using the focus plate. And this is kind of a example on how you use it. I set the cutting to about two or three passes. I don't think I needed that many passes um, for this material. Probably two would have done well, but it cut very quickly and I was extremely happy with the results. And then I moved on to testing some harder woods such as Purple Heart and Chechen. And I wanted to see if I could cut out some wood earrings that I've made for my woodworking business. Now with the laser set to 100%, I had to do at least 10 passes in this test and it still didn't cut all the way through. And to be honest, it would probably be easier just to take it to the scroll saw. Both of these pieces are about an eighth of an inch thick. However, I probably need more passes to cut through and the amount of time that this was taking was not worth this as a practical application in my wood shop. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that during the test, depending on the material, it's going to create a lot of smoke and you want to make sure that you're in a ventilated area. And also you have a fire extinguisher or some kind of way to extinguish a fire if God forbid something were to happen and maybe you set the laser to the wrong strength on the wrong material. Safety first. So for the last test, I recently got a new notebook for my shop and I wanted to see about engraving my logo for Dave or Maid on my new shop notebook. And I have to say this was a very clean engraving and I used the craft paper setting. So the laser wasn't very strong. This is faux leather. I don't know exactly what it is, but I figured that craft paper would be a good setting and I'm very, very happy with it. So let's talk about my first impressions with the Atom Stack P7 M40 portable laser engraver. Now, honestly, this exceeded my expectations. I've had no experience with lasers or uh, anything other than like a cricket. So I might not be the best judge on this laser engraver, but it was very impressive. And after I started using the software and really kind of got a feel what settings I needed to engrave, you know, I thought that, hey, the potential for this was going to be great. Between the 
assembly of the laser engraver and the setup of it, it was very quick, very easy. There were only a few steps and I really like that. When I get something, I wanna use it right away and I don't wanna take forever to get it set up so I can start actually using, playing with it, testing it. I have to say that this one it was pretty close to being just, you know, plug and play. Now I will say that the laser gerbil software is not the best. If you don't have a Mac, you're not gonna be able to use it. However, you do have the option to use Lightburn, which they have a trial version and a paid version. If you wanna use like free software, Laser Girl was gonna be the way to go, but you have to have a PC. Luckily I have both, so I just use my PC, but if you only have Mac, you're gonna have to look at Lightburn. For someone who's being introduced to lasers for the first time, this is a really great option. I'm excited to continue to use this. I'm gonna test it on way more things than I already did. I just really wanted to see how it would work in my realm in the shop, in a wood shop, and see if I could add it as a tool that would benefit me. In terms of cutting certain materials like hardwoods, it's gonna take a long time. And it's probably easier just to go to the bandsaw, scroll saw to cut out certain pieces rather than have the machine do it. But if you have like smaller pieces and use thinner material or use a softer material like basswood, it's actually gonna do a great job. The detail of this laser engraver like went way over my expectations once you dial in those settings and the software. So I'm like super pumped to engrave some things and continue to use this in my woodworking. Now, if I wasn't sent this engraver for free, would I purchase it? The answer is yes, I would totally purchase this. I think it's a good entry laser. And again, as I said before, it's pretty easy to set up and use. Didn't take a lot of time and I had a lot of fun with it and I'm excited to continue to use it and integrate it into my woodworking and just other projects. Now, am I gonna engrave everything that I own? Probably, <laughs> but uh, that said, it's just, there are endless possibilities. So I'm pretty excited about um, testing this more and seeing the potential of this machine. So all that said, I appreciate you watching. And until next time, take care.